Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex and today's video is very special because we are finally, after a year and a month, touring my own island of Lorien. Some of you might have checked in for the live stream where I finished the island. I did update the dream address in that stream so that everyone could go ahead and visit who was there present for me finishing Lorien. Um, I made this flag myself, by the way, little known fun fact. I'm an artist, just kidding, but I did make it. Let's look at this map here with Raymond. I am actually visiting the dream address. Um, so I'm visiting from Lotus Reef. So we might run into myself on the island, but it is, I promise it's my island. There's the dream address if you wanna tag along. And I don't think that my villagers have changed that much from the last iteration, but just in case, we have Raymond, Kiki, Deirdre, Rudy, Lolly, Patty, who is new, Portia, Ioni, Sasha, and Bob. I am obsessed with these villagers. These are like my favorite villagers in the game pretty much. Um, the last few kind of change here and, you know, just as time goes on, but definitely these first few are my favorite villagers. I adore them. So this is like my passion project island. It's pretty intense terraforming. It took a long time to complete this island. I started it when the 2.0 update came out and here we are finally with it complete. I believe this was actually my first build here, the entrance. Um, I just wanted to be dramatic with the gazebos was the only goal here. And I did leave two gifts out for dream visitors. I also do have this little custom design thingy up now because I made fairies that you can customize the little pop-up table display with to make it look like there are little fairies in your garden. Anyway, the presents I left are a folding fan and an ocarina, ocarina, however you say that, just for funsies, you know. Nothing useful for the dream, but very cute. I think I wanna start by going right from the island entrance. So like I said, this was my first build and it includes this little shrine area that I made. Again, this was inspired just by the new items. I wanted to use some of these new items, including the pine trees, these little statues, the uh, this Azumaya gazebo. I was just super excited to get to use those, but I really like how it turned out. It's like a very frivolous part of my island, doesn't really contribute to island life, but it's super cute. Before you go, I just wanna confirm that the beaches are not decorated. I've got this little boat here, that's pretty much it. That's like the extent of beach decor that you're gonna get here on Lorien. We've got very premium beach access here. This is my proudest build I think I've ever done. This is my layered farm. I made like a little farmer's market little area. Like you can go in the farm, pick your own vegetables and then go and buy them right there. There's me. I don't even remember what I say. Welcome darling. Thank you, other me. But yeah, this farm is definitely one of my favorite builds that I've ever done because of this. This is why I call it layered. You can go down and there's another little sunken area with a creek here. I just think it's so cute. I love this farm area and it did get quite a lot of attention here on YouTube when I posted the speed build and I was just really proud. Like everyone seemed to like it. I was like, wow, look at us all getting along right now. I've got a lot of areas like this that are just filler areas, little decor areas. And then we cross over here into the cat neighborhood. You can kind of see it from the farm area. I was really proud of this too. I did decorate every single villager house on the island. So you can go and check those out if you'd like to. Um, I did forget to fix Lolly's house. Let me see which house is hers. We'll go in Lolly's house if she is home, just so I can show you how I messed up. But, oh, before we go any further, look at this map. This is a map I commissioned from AJ, a fellow YouTuber here on well, YouTube. This is so adorable. I love the way this map turned out. It will be on my Instagram, which is LexPlay with three Ys, if any of you want to go and, you know, save it, check it out. Okay, Lolly is not home, but anyway, I forgot to turn around one of her shelves in her house, so it's like facing the wall. That's my bad. That's my bad. She'll forgive me, I'm sure. 
But my goal with this neighborhood was to use, again, I was obsessed with trying to use some of the new items, so a lot of new items here, and I wanted this to have a very city feeling, like an elegant city, because I can't, like, commit to doing a full elegant city. But I thought this little area was cute. And I've actually connected it to another neighborhood. So here we have this land bridge that I am super proud of. I think it turned out really well. Not sure how I feel about the swinging benches on the sides now, but like, we're not changing it. I edited these houses as well. This is Ioni, and then across here, really proud of this, by the way, this little view. Across here is Patty's home. As you can see, she is out walking around, enjoying the view. This is one of the ideas that I had for the longest time, having like a little waterfall view with hop hop spots in front of it. I've been planning to do that since I was making Antilia, so good to get that out of my system, finally. I really like this little pathway area, it feels so natural. And actually back here there is secret access to the secret beach, and Sasha has found it, so apparently not that secret. But I did edit this area, so originally it was very different, but here we are. Continuing left, I've got this like bridge view. This was literally just for the aesthetic of it, but I think it turned out so cute. I was really proud of this build too, just because it did get me, you know, using some of my bridges. I feel like I never use both inclines and bridges on my islands. So, like this island has every single possible incline, but I wasn't really using very many bridges, so that was just a way to use a few of them. I did this on stream, finishing up this area with a little bit of filler, a little seating area. And back here is my shopping district. I did make a little farm here off camera for Timmy and Tommy. I just thought it was cute. So I made them a little farm, and then we've got Able Sisters and Nook's Cranny here. There's also a farmer's market behind Nook's Cranny that is run by gyroids. Look at them, little farmer gyroids. Like, are you kidding? Little babies. And then I've got this like community little banquet area behind Able Sisters. So it's kind of like a farm to table set up with hand washing area. You can come and eat after you shop. And I just think it's really cute. In front of Nook's Cranny, there is like pathway leading down, but this actually leads into another area on the island. You can't go anywhere from here. This is just a view, so it looks pretty, but you can't go anywhere from here. So you don't have to. You don't have to follow this pathway. I also made this little area beside Able Sisters just as like a little rest area. I guess I should have made like a little a little bench or something, but I like it. And then going down, we're heading back towards. Um, resident services, but here is my museum. We've got some little overgrown flowers on the pathway. It is really cute. I love this little pond here for some reason. This just leads into the cat neighborhood that we visited earlier, so if you go left from that bridge, you're at the museum, and the museum is very close here to resident services. So that is the right side of the island. Next we'll head left just to the left and south of resident services is the forest neighborhood. So I gave all these villagers little cabins. It's Portia here and then Sasha to my left and Deirdre here at the bottom. I love this neighborhood. I think it turned out so cute and I always have wanted to do like a full forest core island. So I feel like this gave me a chance to kind of do that on a small scale. I also love this little entrance to the beach. It's so dramatic. But again, we're not decorated. Once upon a time, Lorian's beaches were decorated, so I should have just left them up. I'm obsessed with this view here as you're walking, the way it looks like the waterfalls are moving in the background. Love that. Very much, very many trees and things here. I did finally remember to put someone in the campsite for the dream address. Also, there's the fairy I was talking about. The little fairy, um, that's one of my custom designs that you can get, so it just looks like she's on the flower. I don't know why I decided to make that, but it's my only custom design that I've ever made aside from my flag. And we've got- I made so much access to the beach because I had plans to decorate the beach, but now you can't- there's nothing on the beach, so that's my bad. This is the little campsite area with a bus stop, though. I know it doesn't make sense logically, like no bus could get through these trees, but 
it's a magic bus, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. In order to see the rest of this side of the island, I think the easiest way is just to go up the incline by my house. Um, you can walk along the beach, but you can't really see anything over there. So after the campsite, I'll come up here and boom, here is my house. It has not been edited from previous versions of Lorien, so if you've seen my house before, you know what it looks like. Um, I did take the liberty of getting rid of all the cockroaches that were in there from all of my compulsive time traveling, so it is clean. It is a clean place to be. This pathway, I just wanted to have a nice view. This is the view I was talking about in front of Nook's Cranny. You can see it a little better up here. I didn't leave a ladder, but I did put a vine so that everyone could come and experience this. But this is the view. The whole point of this build was literally just so it was pretty. That was the whole idea. But I think it came out really well. So over there where the... Um, God, I can't remember the name of that arch right now. What the heck? Over there is where we were standing earlier, right in front of Nook's Cranny. This area is right behind the campsite, so we'll just head this way again. Just made a little view, wanted to have this like sunken forest aesthetic going on. Over here was just another for the view kind of build. Just some sunken waterfalls, my specialty. Back behind the sunken waterfall is this sunken pathway inspired by crossing.callisto on Instagram. This is one of my favorite areas on the island. Um, Ani is so smart for coming up with this idea, but I think it turned out lovely. And then because I left Bob out of the cat neighborhood, I felt bad. So I was like, okay, he gets his own little hideaway over here. He gets his own very luxurious lead up. He has his own little seating area. And his house is actually kid core themed because Bob reminds me of a child. He's just a little guy. I do actually want to showcase some of my villager homes just while we're here, but you can check. I have playlists for my channel for different builds and things. Like you can go to my Lorian playlist to see all the speed builds for this island. And there are also like interior builds focused in a different playlist so that you can see all of those come together. Um, I'm gonna head over to the cat neighborhood because I feel like those are my best interiors. So we can visit one of the ones that's not absent like Lolly. So this is Rudy's house. I really like how the back wall came out, especially he's got a little view onto some fields and I feel like it's not that far off from the aesthetic on Lorian. So it felt very appropriate. Even though he's a jock, I kind of made him a little bit of a mess, but I think it's cute. Like he's so busy working out, going to the gym all the time. He doesn't have time to maybe clean up as much as he'd like, but overall it's a very cute home. And of course I gave him a little cat bed because he's a little cat. I've already forgotten whose house this is, but we'll check it too. Oh my gosh, this is Kiki's house. I tried to put a lot of red and like orange vibes in here because her original house has a very like reddish orangey vibe going on. So I assumed that that was one of her favorite colors. And I think it just turned out really cute. It's a very calm place, a very cozy little like cottage vibe almost because I just feel like Kiki would have a very chill and relaxing home. I don't think it'd be very intense. I think it'd be very soft and calming, relaxing for her. Kiki is my favorite villager. For those of you who didn't know, she is a queen. I adore her. We'll talk to her. I just love having company. It's a nice way to mix things up every once in a while, my guy. Look how cute she is. I wish she was wearing her crown. I gave her a crown so that she could walk around and be the queen that she is. These two cat villagers are not home right now, Raymond and Lolly, but I love their little area. I think this like newspaper stack is so cute. I guess it's a book stack. Very adorable. All of that said, if you're interested in the custom designs that I used on this island, they are at the tap link website in my description. You can go and check it out. They, I think it's a tab that says codes that I use and then the codes for this island will be under Lorian 2.0. I hope you love this island as much as I do. I put literally hundreds of hours of work into this and I think it was worth it. In the end, I'm just so relieved that it's complete and you can finally visit. So remember to check that out. Thank you to AJ for making the map and thank you to all of the custom design creators who contributed to this island, unknowingly or not. This was day 18 of Crossmas and I will see you all tomorrow for day 19. Bye!